All right, what's next on the card? We have uh, CM Punk versus Chris Jericho. So uh, the first WrestleMania in uh, CM Punk's 434-day title reign. Okay. Jericho is feuding with CM Punk uh, based on the fact that Chris Jericho thinks that uh, CM Punk is a Jericho clone. His Stole word. his catchphrase. His catchphrase, his attitude, his claim of being best in the world. Uh, they would feud with Jericho bringing up Punk's uh, family history and, and more specifically their uh, history of substance abuse. Oh. His dad being a famous alcoholic. Is this, in, is this in real life? Yeah. Okay. Now, CM uh, Punk, CM Punk, both in wrestling and real life, is uh, straight edge. He doesn't consume drugs of any sort, including alcohol or tobacco. Right. And if you watch his documentary, actually, he recounts a story about. Um, can straight edgers, his, can straight edgers have caffeine? Yeah. Okay. It depends on how strict the they are. Uh, most most of them do have caffeine. Okay. Uh, Punk famously wears the uh, Pepsi tattoo. Well, so I, I think presume... it's his left shoulder. Okay, so presumably he doesn't. Uh, he's not one of the no caffeine. Yeah. Okay. But anyway. Okay, so so Jericho was like mocking his father's alcoholism or something. Yeah, said? and his sister's drug abuse, and I think maybe uh, Punk's mom's drug and alcohol abuse. Th th that is a. Uh, that is a heel maneuver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ha ha! Your di your your dad is an alcoholic. That's, well, that's um, not very nice. if I remember right, he brought it up saying that he would, um, not only would he take Punk's title, but he would reduce him to a broken man who needed to rely on the alcohol and drugs that kept his Holy family going. Shit. <laughs> okay, no. All right, I, I spoke too soon. That is a heel maneuver. Yeah. I'm going to I'm I'm going to drive you to alcoholism. I'm going to drive you to alcoholism, just like your old man who've you've adopted a philosophy to avoid becoming. <laughs> it's pretty good. That that's like yeah. that's like that's like big boss man level villainy. <laughs> the dog eating, or or the father's casket stealing. Yeah. Big, big big boss man is basically the gold standard of of heels. And it's so funny, because I have such, like, I have fond memories of him as a face, just being, like, a jovial security guard. Yeah, he turned face! He well, turned face a few times. Yeah. Well, Sergeant Slaughter tried to turn face after de after betraying the United States during wartime, as you may recall. <laughs> and becoming like, an act... <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, if he was a real sergeant, he probably would have been shot for that. <laughs> he was just, like... Well, I remember the the promos of him during his face turn. He was like visiting like American monuments and crying, and he's like, "What have I done? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Take me back, America." You know, in in in, in hindsight, siding with the brutal ty that you know that brutal tyrant kind of makes me look like a jerk, doesn't it? Ah, uh. two conquering heroes. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we've 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 discussed the, the sergeant before. But oh yeah. Okay, so so this is a title match. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Punk had quite a lengthy title reign, by modern yep. standards. Yep. The longest in the modern WWE. Uh. Okay. So who are you playing as? Uh, right now I'm playing as CM Punk. Okay. Uh, the f the face and the objectives include hitting a top rope elbow to Y2J at ringside, giving him a GTS while he's in critical damage, and then a couple other hidden objectives. Okay. Oh, I should probably mention to everyone uh, uh, at home that unlike all, unlike every other previous episode of this, this is actually post commentary. Yeah. So I'm not due 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 to out. due to <laughs> due to an unfortunate incident a few years ago where I. Insulted a voodoo priest during Mardi Gras. We suffered a series of catastrophic technical failures, and this is the third or fourth time we've recorded this episode. It's just like the old gypsy lady said. I curse you, thinner. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, 
for a lack of other things to talk about, I guess I can talk about the um, the date this uh, December 19, 2014. Um, CM Punk was on Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast a couple weeks ago. Okay. He talked a, a lot about his time in the WWE after he re-signed. And so uh, the things that drove him to leave in earlier this year, 2014, uh, in January. And so, oh, really? uh, okay. yeah. So uh, one of the things was um, creatively, a lot of people didn't like to listen to CM Punk. And, uh, you know, Vince McMahon, uh, who's has the famous line, you, what was it? You, you won't, you don't want what you want, you want what I tell you to want. Okay. Or something like that. God, I'm butchering that line. But, um... You don't want what you want! <laughs> you know, it just, it, it just occurred to me that my, my Vince McMahon impression is also basically my Sergeant Slaughter impression. <laughs> Two conquering heroes at WrestleMania Five. <laughs> uh... I think one of these might be Escape the Walls. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. you. Oh you get put in the walls of Jericho yeah, and then try I'm to put it. I'm putting the walls right now, but I think I might get put in the walls later too. Okay. Um. So. CM Punk knew that at certain times certain wrestlers were hot, and he would advise Vince McMahon to, you know, create angles with those wrestlers. And Vince McMahon would be like, "No, John Cena. No, Big Show. That's who's awesome." That young uh, up-and-comer Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Uh, Vince uh, Punk says that, like, uh, Big Show having no heat is pretty much entirely to blame on uh, Vince McMahon. Pretty much just because he's... (sighs) Convinced that he needs to put him in a bunch of different... Uh, Okay. Hmm? I'm sorry, bud. Uh, just con- because he's convinced that Big Show needs to be put into things to remain relevant. Um, he tells a story about how the Shield came to be. Now the Shield are they're like something like they're the they're a, they were a heel power stable from NXT, okay. and um, they were supposed to be like proteges under CM Punk. Okay. Um, and. What had what was happened? Their, what was their gimmick? What was their gimmick? Uh, that that they just had supreme um, teamwork. Oh, okay. That they were a, a force for justice, who couldn't be uh, corrupted, and would always work together. And that's why, even though they were young rookies and up and comers, mm-hmm. why they were um, were never beaten. Now, like, for a year, they had this streak where they were undefeated. Okay. Um, But before... So the group was supposed to uh, be a heel group that CM Punk would uh, command. What? Uh Uh-oh, it says... Oh! Neckbreaker. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, They were were a heel group that Punk was going to command, and then when... um, uh, when he lost the title at Mania to The Rock, um, CM Punk would turn on the heel group and become a face. And the heel group would still be heel, and then blah blah blah. Didn't end up working out that way. It also didn't end up with the people that they wanted, because the heel group that was supposed to be put together was going to consist of uh, Daniel Bryan, Big Show. And I want to say, I want to say Kofi Kingston. And CM Punk was like, "That's stupid. Don't do that." And instead, he's like, um, he wanted Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Chris Hero, uh, who the WWE rejected for in favor of Roman Reigns. Chris Hero is like now a super indie darling. I think I'm about to. Yeah, there we go. Um, I, I can't help but notice that the match seems to be going poorly, Nick. Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty far removed from the match right now, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, 
So he was supposed to make some sort of face turn against the shield. Yes, who was a completely different group at the time. Um, and then both the uh, creative control of that got taken away even after all three guys came and were told repeatedly that they'd be working with CM Punk and CM Punk worked with them. And then at the last minute they were like, no, Escape you're going to die! Escape the walls of Jericho! Success! Yeah. But I take a code breaker to the face for my trouble. Defeat Jericho with the Anaconda Vice. Yes. I think I'm actually about to lose here. Oh, no. Now, is that a submission hold, I, I assume? The Anaconda Vice, yeah. It's an MMA uh, choke hold. Okay. It, it's actually a pretty cool hold because it involves wrapping their bicep uh, close to their neck. and. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. If they, um, the more they struggle, the tighter their bicep pulls against their neck, and so they'll start to choke themselves. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm familiar with this. Yeah. Anyways, um, oh, let me see. So, so have you listened to the Art of Wrestling podcast with Punk in it? I haven't. Uh, he talks about um, having a staph infection. Ooh. So, uh, Punk had a growth on his back that he didn't know what it was, and the doctors refused to do anything about it. And so, they... Uh... Why did they <clears throat> refuse to do anything about it? Well, because if they put him on the IR list, they couldn't have him wrestle. And he was oh! their, their hottest draw at the time. Oh, okay. And so rather than risk it being something that he had to stop wrestling for, oh, they, had, they just were like, it's okay, here's a Z-Pack, which is wow. uh, antibiotics. Wow. And he was talking about how um, right up until he left, they kept giving him Z-Packs, and he's like, it's not working. And they're like, well, take some more. And then he wrestled on SmackDown, and he shit himself on live TV. Wait, wait, literally? Yeah. Like, as in, you mean, like, when you say he expelled, he had a bowel movement. At, on, uh, what, it, during a match. On I television. Think, I think with the shield, actually. Really? Because he, yeah, yeah, because he said something like, um, every, like, the shield is at the other end of the ring trying not to laugh because, <laughs> because he's sitting there with, like, shit in his pants. And, uh, uh, he wow. tweets about it. Uh, he's like, hey, everybody, I remember the tweet, because he's like, hey, everybody, you should watch Smackdown, uh, Smackdown, because I shit myself on live TV, and he used the hashtag reasons to watch Smackdown, <laughs> and wow. then the WWE creative got to him, and they weren't even upset about him talking about that, they were like, you're a WWE superstar with kids looking up to you, you can't use the word shit. At least they didn't. At least they didn't try to think like, "Hey, this could, you know, this could be his new gimmick." You know, he just so <laughs> he just soils himself uncontrollably in the ring sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, he talks also about. Wait a minute. Uh, also, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jericho is trying to drive him to alcoholism, but yeah, like a but the use of the word shit is unbecoming of a WWE superstar. Yes. Well, I mean, although I'm mean, like to be fair, I guess because CM Punk's a face. Okay. Yeah. Yep, okay, right anyway. There. there was me losing. Oh, well, great job. Thank you. And he, he's shitting himself right now, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. In, sh in shame. <laughs> it's not in rage, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> shitting himself with rage. No, that's... That's... That's too much. Um... So, yeah, he... Uh... He wrestled all the way up until the Royal Rumble, after which he left. Um, he w later went to the, a real doctor, not the WWE doctor. <laughs> a real doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so this this guy did not like get his MD from a Cracker Jack box or something. Well, no. Suppose like what, what the idea is that he's like like he has the degrees and everything, but he like he's just corrupt. Real medicine, yeah. He's he just he, he just corrupt as hell and doesn't actually act in the interest of his patients. No. <laughs> that's that's how Punk paints it. I'm sure, I don't know, I don't know Dr. Whatever very well. 
personally. Okay, but, yeah, uh, it would be fair. We're only getting one side of it, but yeah. To me, I don't know. Cons I don't know. It wouldn't shock me if that's if it isn't. If that it's would true. I mean, very far from shock me. Like that would make a whole lot of sense. Um, he, so he goes to the doctor and he's like, "What is this thing? Because it's a growth and now it's black." And, oh. and uh, he's he, in the doctor's. Uh, the, oh, the WWE doctor. Every time Punk showed him it, he was like, "Does it hurt?" And Punk would be like, "No." And he's like, "Then you're fine." <laughs> <laughs> Folks, the, word of medical advice, so, a weird growth not hurting doesn't necessarily mean it's fine. <laughs> so he goes to the real doctor, and he's like... I can't emphasize that enough. And he's like, uh, what the fuck is this? And the, and the doctor's like, uh, that's black. Uh, I'm gonna run some tests, but I'm pretty sure that's a staph infection. Okay. And Punk's like, great. And they come back and they're like, yeah, that is a very late stage staph infection. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how you're not dead. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, uh, they, they, they cut it out of him, gave him spe specific, uh, staph infection antibiotics, which, which worked, and then, uh, and then CM Punk got better. And now he wants to be in the UFC. Really? Yeah. Is that why he left wrestling? Uh, he left wrestling for a bunch of reasons. Oh, um, so he actually just, he left after the Royal Rumble, and he didn't quit then. You so... know, I, I, I had a, I had a bad staph infection, I was in the hospital for like four days with like antibiotics just plugged into me. <laughs> yeah, CM Punk's wrestling with a full-blown staph infection. Um, so he, he quit after the Royal Rumble and he's like, I need to go home, everything is bullshit, uh, this, you all suck, Daniel Bryan's not in the main event, and you guys are idiots for not putting him there. And, uh, so he left, and then he, like, he's like, Vince McMahon was crying, and he was like, you're like family, and then, uh, like a week into his vacation... Uh, Vince is like, how are you doing? And Punk's like, I'm fine, I'm still not coming back. And then he gets, like, a call, like, a couple days later, and he's like, yeah, you're suspended for two months. And so he's like, okay, whatever, I don't care. He's suspended for two months. After the two months are up, nobody calls him. And then, uh, on his wedding day, he gets papers FedEx to him that he's fired. Ooh. And so, yeah. Again, this is the story from Punk's side, and we'll never hear a Vince McMahon story. But uh, I don't know; it's it it would it's not that shocking if it, if it's all. Yeah. You know, I know none of, none of my brothers nor I are proper sports entertainers. So, uh, you don't like, say. but, but every time I've been put in the walls of Jericho, it's never actually hurt me all that much. Not like other submission holds. I don't know if they're doing it wrong or what. So it never caused you like a loss of bowel control or. No. Okay. And I think this is where the video cuts. I'm going to look at the next one. Alright. No. Okay. So yeah. yeah, staff infections are bad. Yeah. yeah. Hey, folks, if you've ever got some weird growth on you, and then it turns black, don't don't go to the, a doctor recommended by Vince McMahon. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I like to think like if I was ever at a point in my life where like money was not something that I needed to worry about that I would like to be a wrestler. Really? Yeah, if I was at the point where, like, I had the money to not worry about, like, paying bills with a wrestling job. Okay. And, uh, like, if I got hurt, I could retire and that would be fine. Or perhaps pay a competent doctor to examine your face. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, Brock Lesnar, who gets so much money for appearing, like, eight times a year on <laughs> Raw.
Yeah. Well, you may have burned you may have burned some bridges with Mr. McMahon during this uh, let's play, Nick. I hate to. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. I don't know. You know, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure. But uh, I think that if I was willing to work for like peanuts, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't mind if I badmouthed him. He'd be just. And if I got over with the crowd, obviously. Like, he doesn't need another shitty wrestler who nobody cares about. <laughs> I'd name one right now, but, like, it'd just be too mean. We're, we're, not, about, we're not about being mean here at Pointless Side Quest. Nope. Haven't, haven't alienated anybody lately. Also, refresh my memory, is this... Are we coming up on any of those matches where you lose repeatedly and I'm just I just turn heel on you? I don't know. Um I'm pretty sure I'm about to win yeah. because because I think at some point I give up on using the top rope elbow <laughs> uh on the outside. Oh, okay. Because that's the specification I need to hit it on him when he's outside the ring. Okay. And here you're probably trying to lure him out. Yeah. Um, let me see, after this is, <sighs> I think we go to 29 after this, and that's, uh, Triple H, Lesnar, Cena Rock 2, and CM Punk Undertaker. And I don't think, that's why I went to the outside, because he had two finishers stored up. And I knew that if he code breakered me, he couldn't pin me outside. Oh! Okay. He'd have to let me get up. You're quite the ring tactician. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I think I'm about to just go for the vice here. Oh, yeah. Ow! Not yet. God damn it, what's wrong with me? Oh! That was a nice one. There we go. Yeah. And it's over. It is. It is over. Generic victory. And the belt is not even touching his shoulders. <clears throat> CM Punk wins his battle with alcoholism and, <laughs> and by uh, by put by putting it in a, an asphyxiating submission hold where he uses its strength against them. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's that's how you beat alcoholism, kids. You force it to drink. <laughs> it's drink until it can't drink anymore. You fight fire with fire. It'll never drink again. You know, it's, uh, it's like you know. It's like you know. You get caught smoking, and then your dad makes you smoke a whole pack. That that literally had never happened to me ever, and I don't even know if people still do that. It never happened to me either. I've just seen it happen on TV, so I assume at some point someone did it in real life. <laughs> at some point, somebody did it. Otherwise, it's just a story that everybody tells that happened to nobody. 